Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. Great to have you here to worship with us, either on site or those of you that are worshiping online. We so appreciate uh, that you are making the effort to be here with us. You know, you can be with us in many different ways, and uh, those ways are, are found up on the screen here. You can come live, of course, but you can also check us out, live stream. You can check us out on uh, YouTube, and you can check us out at our website at uh, faithwestwood.com. So, invite you to do so, even during the week. You know, you can go back and listen to the service again, since we're live streaming and recording it. We uh, want to uh, celebrate a little bit today. Uh, this is something a little bit unusual, but we have some pictures that were taken of our various worship activities and opportunities last week. So let's take a minute to look at some of these pictures. Very good. So we can, we've got a lot going on here, and uh, it's exciting to be a part of this congregation. If you would uh, help us out this morning, if you're here live, please take a connection card and fill it out. Please drop it off on, on your way out of the sanctuary today, and uh, make sure to, to fill it out completely, both sides. If you are online with us, please connect with the host, and uh, the host will help lead you through any questions you might have on how to connect, how to give online, all those kinds of things. Today, our uh, special ministry of Faith Westwood and our mission offering will go to our Helping Hands uh, mission that we're having to help people that are in financial need in our faith community here. There's a new sermon series that we're starting today. I can't wait to hear Pastor Steve's message on it, and you've got little cards in the pews in front of you. If you want to look at that, take it home. Or you know what? There's a little QR code right here. And, and most of you have a little QR scanner. Just scan that, and then that will let you know a lot more details about this sermon series than I have time to tell you right now. Uh, for example, if you'd like to know what next week's Scripture is, you'd like to prepare. I know a lot of you in your small groups or individual uh, study at home, you'd like to read ahead. And, uh, and, and see a little bit about what's going on. So I encourage you to check that out. At this time, I encourage you now to stand as we sing the praises of God together.
hallelujahs to Jesus Christ the King, the hope of all who seek Him, the help of all who find. None other is so loving, so good and kind. He lives, He lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning, boys and girls. Miss Leah here. I'm so glad you could be with us today. And remember, no matter where you're joining us from, at home or here in worship, you are exactly where God wants you to be. Today we're starting a new series, and in Big Church, they're calling it Craving Community, which means that we want to be able to get together and spend time together. And so for children's time, we're going to call it Better Together. Can you say that with me? better together. So you know how we say in children's ministry, it's the same, but totally different. Well, that describes what we're going to talk about today. And it's talking about you. We are all totally different because God created us that way. We are all unique creations of God. Can you think of some things that are different about you from your family or your friends? God loves those things because he created us that way. When we believe in Jesus, though, we are the same. What does that mean? Well, we are all God's children when we believe in Jesus through our faith. So when we gather together with our faith family, or our small groups, or our ohana, we are all God's children and we are the same in God's eyes. So we need to remember that even though we are created totally different, we are all the same because we are God's children. So remember that this week. We are the same because we are all God's children, but we are totally different because God created us that way. Don't forget after children's time to check out the ways that you can do Sunday school at home today. They are on the Faith at Home page at faithwestwood.com or you can find the links in an email that I sent out this morning. And also Sunday school is going every Sunday at the 1045 service. And you can find more details about that in the email that comes out every week. And next week we are going back to our old schedule of checking in before church and going to church and watching children's time in church in your pews and then going up to children's ministry and Sunday school. So until next time, may the Lord bless you and always smile upon you. And all God's kids said, amen. I love you. Bye. Please stand and let's join together in worship.
must now meet both east and west in him meet south and north all christly souls are one in him throughout the Please remain standing for the reading of the word. Sometimes we uh, just give you a test to see if you've memorized the hymnal or not, and uh, some of you passed the test. I won't say which ones. Our uh, scripture reading this morning comes from the book of Galatians, chapter 3 verses 26 through 29. So in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. For all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor there is there male and female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. This is the word of God for a people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Please be seated. Steve. Thank you, Russ. Hey, well, good morning, everybody. Uh, you know, on Easter Sunday, we crossed a milestone at Faith Westwood. For the first time since the pandemic began, we had more people worshiping in, in person than we did online. And I don't expect that to happen. Yeah, isn't that something? And I don't expect that to happen today, but I think that day is going to come when that's going to be more the standard. Uh, and But wherever you are this morning, whether you're in the pew or on the couch, it's good to worship with you today. Let's pray. Dear God, we love you because you first loved us. And you loved us so much that you came to dwell among us in the person of Jesus. Oh, Lord Jesus, we are amazed by you. You took the worst that evil could do on the cross. You exhausted its power and crushed it under your feet. Thank you, Lord, that by your victory on the cross, you have set us free from the dominion of sin. You have claimed us as your own. You have set us free to live in your kingdom. We rejoice in this great salvation. In your name we pray, and all God's people said, amen. Well, as Russ was saying, today we start a six-Sunday series. Uh, we're going to focus on one simple fact, that we all crave community. And we crave it because it is essential. It doesn't matter if you are introverted or extroverted. Humans cannot flourish without it. And by community, I'm not just talking about the neighborhoods we live in. It's more than having services near us like schools and grocery stores and hospitals. I'm talking about community on a deeper level. As Jesus' people, there is a profound spiritual element that undergirds it all. So here's my definition of community as it pertains to this series. Community in Christ means belonging to an extended family of Jesus' people where we share life deeply together. You know, I think this fits perfectly with one of our core values at Faith Westwood, that we are relational. We're about building relationships in everything we do, even when we're working on a task together. The task is not our primary agenda. Connecting to one another relationally is always more important than the task. Now, sometimes we forget. Occasionally we slip up and let the task take priority, but our value uh, that we lift up of being relational calls us back to what is more important. You know, I grew up going to a very relational church. Uh, Cedar Hill United Methodist 
was and is a country church. Uh, nearly everybody lived on a farm. Back then, it was uh, much more multi-generational than it is now. But as a kid, uh, these people, you know, I just sort of accepted them as my extended family. And uh, it just seemed to me that the, the adults there, they loved me and affirmed me like I was one of their own. And I guess I was. You know, I can still picture myself uh, going through the line at many a potluck church dinner in the church basement. Uh, and I thought, what a spread. You had, you had two eight-foot tables full of food on, the, on both sides and then a, another whole table of desserts. And I always had my eye out for some homemade fried chicken and some homemade pie, and I was never disappointed. I remember my high school Sunday, Sunday school class, just a handful of us. We met in the church kitchen. And it was led by a college student, Billy Landon. He was there for us. When you're in high school, you know, it's tempting to believe, well, you don't really need that anymore. But I'm, I would say that it's just as important as ever. Why? Because you were made for it. We are created for connection. We crave it like oxygen. Without it, we begin to die. God said, it's not good for us to be alone. You know, there's more to being a Christian than amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. More than me. It's not just about me. His amazing grace also provides for us a community. And that's what we're going to explore today and in the next coming weeks. What is this community that God has provided for us? How does it help us to thrive? What is it that we crave? Today we're going to be looking at a passage from the Apostle Paul's letter to the Galatians. Uh, so let me put up here a map. Uh, Galatia is the region shown in green there, as you can see, in Asia Minor. Asia Minor is uh, the whole thing where Turkey is today. We don't know whether Paul's letter was sent to congregations in South Galatia or North Galatia, or both. We know, though, that Paul brought the gospel to South Galatia on his first missionary journey uh, to the towns of Iconium, Lystra, and Derbe. Some scholars think it's possible he also went to North Galatia on his second missionary journey. Well, whatever it was, some Galatians accepted Paul's message. They put their faith in Jesus. They became redeemed, renewed, reborn. They were filled with the Holy Spirit. Before this, they were pagans, which means they were worshiping gods representing the natural world. But now, through faith in Jesus, these non-Jewish Galatians are woven in to the historic promises of God. God promised Abraham that one day his descendants would bless peoples of all nations. And through one of Abraham's descendants, Jesus of Nazareth, it was finally happening. And this new community of, of disciples in Galatia began to thrive. They were living sp the Spirit-powered life of, of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So they were living holy lives. Paul tells them, you are running a good race. But sometime after... Paul left Galatia, things go terribly wrong. New missionaries show up with a very different message about what it means to belong to Jesus. When Paul hears about it, he's alarmed. So what does he do? He sits down. He writes him a letter. After beginning with his very regular, polite greeting, Paul wastes no time in getting straight to the point. Uh, chapter 1, verses 6 and 7, Paul says, I'm astonished that you are so quickly deserting the one who called you uh, to live in the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel, which is really no gospel at all. Evidently, some people are throwing you into confusion and are trying to pervert the gospel of Christ. You listen, they go, ooh, <laughs> 
It makes you wonder, doesn't it? What's so different about the gospel, these, this different gospel that new missionaries are teaching? When I was a, when I was a pastor in Lincoln, uh, our church started out at a middle school worshiping there, and after a while, some college students began showing up on Sunday mornings. We didn't know them, but they, what they were worshiping with us. They were from Union College, a Seventh-day Adventist uh, school, and we thought, hey, this is great. Love to have them here. A few years later, one of them confided in me that they had come as missionaries to see if they could cast seeds of doubt among a few people and then win them over to the Adventist brand of faith. And he said, but Steve, we were so surprised. This community was so full of life and love, and it was so real that we found ourselves drawn into it. Eventually, this student left the Adventist faith, even though he was brought up in it, even though he was attending an Adventist college, even though his father was an Adventist pastor. Today, this young man is a, is a Christian pastor in California. Like Seventh-day Adventists, the new missionaries in Galatia believed that the Sabbath, only the, only, the Sabbath could only be honored on Saturday and that you had to follow the Old Testament dietary laws. But the new, the new missionaries in Galatia went even further. They required all males to be circumcised. They said, you have to become a Jew if you want to be a Christian. No compromises. And these new missionaries made it a very compelling case that if you don't become a Jew, you are not in God's good favor. And then in chapter 3, Paul gets downright confrontational. He says, You foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? Maybe I should start preaching like that. You foolish people of faith, Westwood, who has tricked you? Or maybe not. I don't know. Let me, let me quickly summarize uh, chapter 3 for you. Paul asks, were you set free from your former pagan lives by becoming Jews and obeying all the laws in Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy? No. You were set free by putting your faith in Jesus who died for you. Did you receive power to live holy lives by slavishly following a list of commandments? No. You received power to live a holy life from being filled with the Spirit. Did you become God's children by first becoming Jews? No. You became God's children by faith, just like Abraham did. And then he tells them to remember their baptism when they professed Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And when they were baptized, very probably a white robe was placed on them, a symbol of being clothed in Christ. And they didn't have to become Jews first. Now, Paul is fine with the fact that he's a Jew who belongs to Jesus, and they are Gentiles who belong to Jesus, and those differences no longer divide them. Uh, in the scripture that Pastor Russ read for us, uh, these words may have been spoken over these new disciples when they were baptized. Verses 26 and 27. So in Christ, you are all children of God. How? By obeying the law of Moses? No. Through faith. For all of you who were baptized in Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. And the baptismal liturgy continues in verse 28, which is our key verse for today. There is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male and female, for you are all what? Say the rest with me. You are all one in Christ. Imagine Baptism Sunday in Galatia. Picture a congregation, say, maybe 50, and among them a group of five newly baptized, dripping wet, full of smiles, 
each of them now covered with a clean white robe. And one of the church leaders says, you are children of God through faith. You are clothed with Christ Jesus. And as his community, we are no longer divided by Jew and Gentile, slave or free, male and female, for we are all one in Christ Jesus. And everybody cheers, right? So here's the heart of today's message, plain and simple. We are united as Jesus' people, which means our differences no longer define us or divide us. Sure, we have differences. If, if uh, you grew up a Jew attending a synagogue and learning the Torah, you'll have a different perspective from the next person who grew up pagan and learning incantations to try to control the fertility gods. We don't deny that those differences are there, but they're not paramount. We put our faith in Jesus. We become part of his family. We are community in Christ. That's what defines us. We are united as Jesus' people, which means our differences no longer define us or divide us. If, if you're a slave in first century Galatia, you may have very few rights in this world. If you're a freeborn Roman citizen, the empire gives you plenty of rights. That's the way the world works, unfortunately. But when the community of Jesus gathers to worship and to work and to learn and to eat together, those distinctions no longer apply. They no longer define us. There's no hierarchy of status in the church. I don't know about you, but I want to belong to a community like that. I want to belong to a community where a person's worth is not defined by dollar signs. I want to belong to a community where wisdom is not defined by academic degrees. I want to belong to a community where all races come together and are treasured. We are united as Jesus' people, which means our differences no longer define us or divide us. In first century Galatia, the person giving the, the message on any particular day might be a slave. In the church, he has equal status with a Roman citizen. The New International Version uh, gives us a good translation of verse 26 when it says, you are all children of God. But the original Greek says it this way, you are all sons of God. And that was important to say in a culture where only males were heirs, right? And in verse 28, the bas baptismal liturgy clarifies that being sons of God is not just a male thing. It says, nor is there male and female. You see, it means that God's promise is for all of us. Now, obviously, when you belong to Jesus, your gender is not erased. <laughs> you don't suddenly become androgynous. I mean, that's not the goal. But I, what it's saying is that our differences no longer become barriers. We live in the age of the Messiah, where both Men and women are filled with the Holy Spirit. Both women and men serve as they are gifted to serve. And a woman's spiritual gifts are not inferior to a man's spiritual gifts because they all come from the same Holy Spirit. The Old Testament prophet, Joel, looked forward to this day, the day of the Messiah. He said, the Lord says... Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. We don't talk much about uh, the gifts of prophecy much these days. It, it probably happens, though, more than we realize. Let's say someone in your faith group um, occasionally shares a word of challenge or guidance or clarity that just seems spot on. 
It's just what, it's just what the group needs to hear at that moment. Now, it could be a word of wisdom, or it could be the gift of prophecy, a message inspired at that moment by the Holy Spirit. And it can come from a woman just as much as from a man. We are united as Jesus' people, which means our differences no longer define us or divide us seems to me that one of the biggest threats to our unity in Christ is when our politics becomes our primary identity. It's when you identify more with your political party than your church family. And that can be very divisive. In the same way, some people make their sexuality their primary identity. Some people make race their primary identity. Some make their favorite sports team their primary identity. All those things have their place, but they have to sit in the back seat when we belong to Jesus because he's driving. Neither is there Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male and female, for you are all one. In Christ Jesus and I would add there is neither Democrat nor Republican neither Nebraskan nor Iowan neither black nor white neither young nor old neither gay nor straight neither poor nor wealthy neither educated nor uneducated for we are all one in Christ Jesus and again I'm not saying those differences don't exist they do They're part of us, but we must not let those differences run the show. Today, I invite you to imagine it with me. Picture a community of people on a path, walking together, learning life from Jesus together. When the world tries to divide us into political silos, we come together, one in Christ. When the world tries to divide us over issues of race, we come together, one in Christ. When the world tries to uh, divide us into marketing segments, (laughs) we come together, one in Christ. Do you crave that kind of community? I believe a lot of us do. Let's pray. Oh God, we crave community. You have placed this longing in our hearts. We want to be in the community where politics or age or race or gender or economics don't become points of division. Oh God, please let this church be a sign of your healing work in the world. You know we're flawed, just like the churches in the Bible were flawed. Still, we ask you to make us the kind of community you meant for us to be. Jesus, you prayed that your people would be one. And we join you in that prayer. Make us one. And now I want to give you a full minute to pray silently and, and bring to God whatever's on your heart.
now let's join together in the prayer that Jesus taught us, this prayer for his community. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let's stand. Um, just so you know, uh, we want to give people opportunities to participate in community. And uh, during this six-week series, we're starting a couple of short-term groups. If, so if you're not in a faith group, uh, I'll be leading one, co-leading one on Wednesday nights at 6.30. And we'll be meeting in Fellowship Hall. We'll kind of keep, we'll wear masks, we'll be safely spaced, and um, we'll, I look forward to that. And then also we've got another one that is starting tonight at 5 o'clock by Zoom. So if you are interested in either one of those, you can talk to me or you can talk to Holly Timberlake or any of the other staff. We'll, we'll be, uh, put you in touch and get that worked out for you, okay? In seven days, we'll be back here worshiping God together. And over the next seven days, remember that in Jesus, we are one people. We are one in him. And the things that the world tries to chop us up and divide us with, we know, we know that they 
are not stronger than what holds us together. We pray in his name. Will we join with me as we say, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.